One second, you're playing in an AFL game, running back for a courageous mark. Then, these are the AFL players that almost died. And for Jack Higgins, a couple months after his 20th birthday, he received some news that would change his life forever. After playing in a VFL match on Sunday, Higgins complained of horrible headaches that night, along with blurry vision. His symptoms were so bad that the Tigers' small forward was hospitalised for two nights. Higgins had sustained his fair share of concussions throughout his footy career, so things weren't looking good. That was when the doctors notified him that he had in fact suffered a brain bleed. But unlike originally thought, Higgins' serious injury had nothing to do with past head knocks, and instead an abnormality in his brain that made him more prone to brain injuries. But the Tiger's injury was much worse than you might think. You see, when the doctors told Higgins that they had to get something out of his brain, he was terrified. The news left him in tears, thinking over the all too real possibility that the surgery might leave him paralysed, or even worse, prove unsuccessful. Luckily for everyone, Higgins' recovery went way better than anyone could have ever expected. After fears of not being able to play footy or even walk ever again, one year was enough recovery time for Higgins to make a remarkable comeback. He didn't play football for 11 months after the brain bleed, but made a return for Richmond's round 2 match against Collingwood in 2020. Jack Higgins now plays for St Kilda, where he's playing better than he ever has. 2023 was his breakout year, leading the Saints goal kickers list with a career best 36 majors. Wishing him all the best for his future years at St Kilda. Oh, I'm absolutely wrapped. I, mean, I was a huge Saints fan when I was younger, and it's just to be here, it's a dream come true. Always, when I was a kid, just thought I'd, now it's finally here. Yeah, I'm just goosebumps. Tom Lonergan had a similar near fatal experience in just his seventh AFL game. In a 2006 match against Melbourne, the then 22 year old Lonergan took a courageous mark while running back and crashed into oncoming Demons player Brad Miller but the young cat's forward had been hit in the rib cage, leaving him in pain on the ground for a few minutes before trainers helped him walk off. As bad as the initial contact looked, Lonergan appeared to have come off from the hit relatively unscathed. But once arriving to the bench, he went extremely pale, letting club doctors know that something wasn't right. He was taken to Geelong Hospital, but once he arrived, Doctors realised that Lonergan's situation was way worse than Cats fans could have ever imagined. He was forced to undergo emergency surgery in order to save his life. During this, he was administered 45 units of blood, which was two times the amount of blood supply he had at the time, and Lonergan even had to have his right kidney removed. Lonergan, however, didn't quite grasp the deadly nature of the situation until afterwards. Speaking to doctors, he found out that he was really, really close to not making it through the surgery. But the surgery caused him to lose a ton of weight, going from 96 kilos to just 79, his starting weight at the club. His tragic injury happened in around 21 of 2006, and Lonergan wouldn't play another game of senior football until round 10 of 2008, where he'd scored two goals in a win over Carlton. When it comes to inspirational AFL stories, there's not many that come close to that of Tom Lonergan. I think the injury I had in, uh, in 2006 probably made me realise how quickly football can be taken away. Obviously pretty close to, to not being here. Richard Osborne was Fitzroy's star forward in the late 1980s, but in his first and only season with Sydney in 1993, a game against Geelong at the SCG turned into tragedy. In an attempt to bump the Cats' Paul Lynch, Osborne clashed heads with teammate Dale Lewis. Lynch was left seriously hurt and dazed 
but it was Osborne who came off second best. He was knocked out cold before he even hit the deck and began shaking uncontrollably on the ground. Something was seriously wrong. Osborne might not remember the events of that night, but he was surrounded by paramedics and an ambulance on the field who had to work on him all the way from the SCG to the hospital to ensure that he made it. Miraculously, Osborne returned just three weeks later and only missed one game for the remainder of the season, this time wearing a helmet for safety measures. Uh, Richard uh, was badly injured that day, he got a, um, a bad knock to the, to the head. Um, you know, I guess most of the people at that arena that day were very concerned for him. I was just glad to see him recover and, and get back on the field. Yeah. Now, Jonathan Brown is no stranger to injuries. Throughout his 14 year career, Brown suffered from numerous deadly head knocks and concussions that eventually forced him into retirement in 2014. But there was one incident that stood out from the rest. Against Geelong in 2011, Brown went back for a courageous mark like he's always done. This time, however, he was met with the elbow of fellow teammate Mitch Clark. After the hit, while lying on the ground, Brown felt like this might be the end of not only his AFL career, but also his life. Brisbane club doctor Paul McConnell felt the same way, fearing that the hit would have deadly consequences. Brown was completely unconscious for at least five minutes, not moving a single bit. Despite everyone's initial fears, he was able to make a pretty remarkable recovery, thanks to the many plates and screws put in his face by doctors. But that wasn't the only time that Jonathan Brown almost met his end. In early 2003, Brown was engaging in a day of drinking with his mates at a friend's place. The group had just witnessed Steve Waugh hit a century, and afterwards, Brown started wrestling with his cousin out on the balcony. As expected, the two were unable to keep their balance crashing straight through the balcony railing and falling a couple meters before hitting the hard ground. The Lions key forward suffered from a seriously sore rib that he had to lie to teammates about, telling them that he'd fallen off his bike. That alone wouldn't have been deadly enough, but right next to where the pair landed was a sandstone block. Brown remains adamant that if one of them had hit their head on the block, they would have lost their life that day. I had the operation and they put a brand new bull bar on my chin and uh, I was right to go. Make sure to subscribe for more videos like this one.